Good morning. Um, we'll combine our announcements with our welcome this morning um, so that uh, we can proceed with our service. And there's a few things to share this morning. Um, and so I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and um, look forward to uh, our opportunity to honor him today um, in this worship. Um, I wanted to remind everyone that next week is July 4th. And um, so the fourth, for the 4th of July, that is our sacrament service. Our brother Vic Monroy will be speaking. Um, we'll have a priesthood meeting at 9 o'clock until about 10.15. Um, we'll have our worship service at 10.30, um, same time as this week. And then uh, for all are invited to a cookout at uh, the Carriker's house. Um, after um, in the afternoon from four to eight or as long as you would like to stay um, and uh, again uh, we have some handouts which I think I left in the basement um, that we can give with directions to the character's house if you need uh, directions but the congregation will be providing meat and buns and paper goods as normal um, and then if you could bring a side dish or dessert um, those uh, those are welcome um, Last week was our first week um, with uh, masks being optional. Um, the World Church gave us uh, the permission to do that. And again, if, if you are not vaccinated or feel that um, it's important for you to wear a mask for your own protection, then you're welcome to do that. Um, so that, that, will be, um, that will be up to, to your discretion uh, in your judgment, um, knowing that uh, none, of us, none of us would like to be sick and None of us would like to make anyone sick, so um, we'll follow, the, follow the, the direction we feel led to do. Um, but it is important that if we feel sick or have been exposed to someone, that we, we uh, worship from home uh, so that uh, we can uh, protect each other. Uh, today, there will, uh, will not be an offertory, um, and so if you have tithes and offerings to, uh, to give today, you can just put them in the back as we leave today. We know that uh, a couple days ago, our, one of our family um, left us. And um, we remember this morning uh, the family of Ted Cox III um, as they continue to struggle, um, both with that loss and, um, and still being sick. And so Ted IV is sick. Um, he's at home with his family um, uh, uh, trying to recuperate. Uh, and Terry is still in the hospital um, uh, until she's uh, able to go home. Um, so we remember them. Um, our Lord has, uh, has gathered our brother home, and um, that's the beautiful thing about our God, is that uh, he transforms our lives into something new and different. And so um, this life isn't just a life to be lived. It's not a, just a thing we do and enjoy it as much as possible and then leave this earth. Uh, but we know that our God has made us and he has created us in his image and he's made us capable of being with him, which means that you, you were made to be home with him. You, you were made with the capacity to be like him. And it's his good and beautiful work to make you like him so that we can be with him. And um, so he transforms even death. Death is not uh, the end, um, but it is the, the beginning of eternity uh, with our God. And everything he does with us is to prepare us to meet him. 
And so uh, that's why we worship today. That's why we come together to honor this God. And um, this morning there was a, a, a campfire song that uh, sort of uh, just weighed heavily upon me. I'd like to read it. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love you, adore you, we bow down before you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Son of God, we magnify you. Son of God, we magnify you. You saved us from sin, gave a new life within. Son of God, we magnify you. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. You lead us, you guide us, you dwell right inside us. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. And we know that these are all aspects of God. He's our maker, our savior, and our guide. And he is within us, and he directs us to do those things that are good. I would uh, leave us with these three verses from 3 Nephi chapter 5 as we uh, enter into worship today. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the salt of the earth. But if the salt shall lose its savor, wherewith shall the earth be salted? The salt shall be tre- thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the light unto this people, a city that cannot that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Behold, do men light a candle and put under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Therefore, let your light, God's light, so shine before this people. And so we worship and honor and adore this great God as we have opportunity to gather today. And so uh, as we enter into worship today, um, we will sing hymn 297. When my people saith the Spirit, after which our brother Ken will bring the offering, the opening prayer.
our loving Heavenly Father. Lord, we draw together this morning in this house of worship that you uh, provide for us, Father, that we might come to have your spirit to abide with us, that, Father, we might uh, hear your voice, feel the impress of your spirit upon us, to enlighten our hearts and minds, Heavenly Father. And so we thank you for this beautiful day and this opportunity to worship you. We pray, Father, for uh, our hearts to be softened, that we might uh, allow you to touch us this very special day. Father, we pray and uphold our brother Ron, who uh, will stand this day, Father. Stand and bear witness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of the beauty of who he is, the promise, Father, that you have given unto us of your kingdom here on this earth, that, Father, we might dwell with thee, that way we have peace within our hearts, and that we would shout with joy, Father, for the beauty that you are unto us. So bless us this day. Bless us whether we're here in this sanctuary, whether we're in our homes, or wherever they might hear these words, Father that the Spirit would bear witness of the truthfulness of the hour, and that this day, Father, all honor and glory would be unto thee. So we thank you for uh, the beauty of the hour, for the quietness, the stillness, and for the joy, Father, from worshiping you. Bless us as we would lift our voice in song. Bless those little ones, Father, this day who would uh, praise you from on high. For, Father, they are a joy, and how pleasing it is, Father, when no matter how old or young we are, we lift our voice unto you. We thank you, Father, and might we worship this day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is my prayer. In the precious name of our Savior, even Jesus, amen. I'd like to read from section 10 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Here's the scripture. These scriptures this morning is a very exciting subject for me. It's called Zion. Oh, Zion. You just watch. In the next few years, you just watch. The Lord will move his hand. and Zion will become more of a reality. <clears throat> A great and marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. Behold, I am God, and give heed to my word, which is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, to the dividing asunder of joints and marrow. Behold, the field is white, all ready to harvest. Therefore, whoso desires to reap, let him thrust in his sickle with his might, and reap while the day lasts. Yea, whosoever will thrust in a sickle and reap, the same is called of God. Now as you have asked, behold, I say unto you, keep my commandments. Seek to bring forth and establish the cause of Zion. Seek not for riches, but for wisdom. And behold, the mysteries of God shall be unfolded to you. Behold, he that has eternal life is rich. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones. 
unto him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Well, it's sure good to be here this Sunday morning. Um, my, my, I didn't know you could sing so good. Whoa, that was good. You both can sing better than I can. <laughs> um, yeah, Jesus does love the little children. And actually, all of us are called to be like little children. And we kind of grow up, and sometimes we take on things that are not all that, that good. But Jesus loves the little children of the world. He certainly does. It's good to be here. Uh, <clears throat> from 1 Nephi 187. And this is what we'll talk about today for a little bit. And blessed are they who shall seek to bring forth my Zion. For they shall have the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> 1958. I was, how old was I in 58? Uh, well, I won't tell you. I probably wouldn't get it right. Or I might even lie about it. I don't know, you know. But uh, uh, no, I was 14. And um, my folks and my two uncles prayed a lot about gathering to Zion. And they prayed and fasted, and we would have times of prayer together, as actually there were four families, all relatives of mine. Uh, part of them were the Cornish family, and part were the Davies family. Whether they should move to Zion, whether they should gather to Zion. When Fred M. was the prof president of the church, he spoke a lot about the gathering. I'll mention a couple of times in here this morning, there's a little disappointment in me concerning the, uh, our church, not this congregation, but our church, who seem to have kind of um, put away the cause of Zion. Let me tell you something. It's more prevalent, more needed today than ever before. The cause of Zion. So in 1959, April of 1959, we moved to Independence, Missouri. And how exciting that was. And we would sing songs as we traveled. And um, we would sing and uh, uh, <clears throat> we just had a, a, a one-ton truck at that time. And all five of us would gather in the cab and we would sing Going to Zion. Brothers and sisters, you don't know how significant today is in regard to the cause of Zion. <clears throat> you know, if there was two things that would describe the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, if there were two things that would describe them, there's many things that you could say that would describe him, but two things that described our church. It was the cause of Zion and the new covenant. The new covenant being the Book of Mormon. That was two of the major things that we were to bring forth. And, and that's what I want to talk with you just a little bit about. You know, section 36 is a good section to, lead, to read about Zion. 
You can this week read section 36. Genesis 7 and section 36 are, are pretty much uh, the same. <clears throat> okay. And it came to pass that Enoch cried unto the Lord, saying, When the Son of Man cometh in the flesh, shall the earth rest? And the Lord said unto Enoch, Look, and he looked and beheld the Son of Man lifted up on the cross after the manner of men. And the Lord said unto Enoch, As I live, even so will I come in the last days. Brothers and sisters, this is the last days. And... Uh, even so, I will come in the last days in the days of wickedness and vengeance to fulfill the oath which I made unto you concerning the children of Noah. And the day shall come that the earth shall rest, but before that day the heavens shall be darkened, and a veil of darkness shall cover the earth, and the heavens shall shake, and also the earth. And great tribulation shall be among the children of men, but my people... But my people will I preserve, and righteousness will I send down out of heaven. And righteousness and truth will I cause to sweep the earth with a flood to gather out my own elect from the four corners of the earth unto a place which I shall prepare, a holy city that my people may gird up their loins and be looking forth for the time of my coming. For there shall be my tabernacle, and it call, shall be called Zion, a new Jerusalem. Genesis 7, 67 through 70. Oh, get a chance to read that. Read it. These scriptures weren't just brought forth to, um, to uh, <clears throat> all just kind of things to talk about. That is truth. That, that is the truth. We have lived, for the most part, um, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the aughts, I guess, the teenage year years. Now we're into the 20s, and it has been nothing but prosperity. Uh, I just sit in there, and, and all the conveniences in my home and in my car, and, and uh, everything is just wonderful. We live in prosperity. But I think you're seeing just a little bit just a little bit of this virus that's sweeping around. This is some of the things that will happen in the last days. I'm not sure the folks in Washington, D.C. know much about financial accountability. And that worries me a great deal because that might be the ending results of us that our finances go haywire. And then all kinds of problems will stem from that. Turn to, uh, if you want to, to section 57. Here's a, here's a little note that you're, I'm no are aware of. Hearken, O ye elders of my church, saith the Lord your God, who have assembled yourself together according to my commandments in, in this land, which is the land of Missouri, which is the land which I have appointed and consecrated by the gathering of the saints. Wherefore, this is the land of promise and the place for, for their day, for the city of Zion. Behold, the place which is now called Independence is the center place and the spot for the temple. Can you imagine that? I don't think you realize fully the calling that you have in this aspect of the Zion. Oh, the calling that you have in this aspect of Zion. <clears throat> um, yeah, the center place of Zion is Missouri. Independence. And you're called to a very, very significant uh, uh, work. Let me share a little scripture with you. You know, if you, you've probably read all the scriptures. Uh, 
I hardly have any markers in my book. Oh, I guess I got a lot of markers, don't I? But um, listen to this. This is important. Verily I say unto you that you are chosen out of the world to declare my gospel with a sound of rejoicing and with the voice of a trump. Sorry. Lift up your hearts and be glad, for I'm in your midst. I'm your advocate with the Father, and it is good will to give you the kingdom. Your calling, you are chosen. You are chosen for this day. Oh, I believe that. You just don't happen along in life and stumble along and do this and do that. You're chosen. You're chosen to be an advocate for Christ and the Father. You're chosen to spread the good news. Zion is for the pure in heart. Zion is for the righteous. Zion is where there's no poor among them. My wife and I uh, work with some poor people. And... Um, <clears throat> uh, We've got plenty, and it's important that we share the plentiness that we have. And um, um, is it kindly and discreetly as I try to work in some aspects of good finance and taking care of your money, some of that seems to be difficult for some. And... Uh, <clears throat> When I was a boy, I got 25 cents a week in allowance. Five cents of it went in the piggy bank. And, and that was just automatic. Of course, that was taught to me. And um, uh, <clears throat> Zion, the great calling of you as people, the city of Zion, city of independence. Zion is both for the spiritual and the economical. You know, when we prepare for Zion, we mainly talk about growing spiritually, and that's what we should. We need to grow spiritually. We need to recognize our calling in this great work of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our calling. We moved to Zion, and we rejoiced in it. And, uh, my dad's ministry flourished, um, and uh, and Zion was 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 a part of our life. There is a concern about tribulation in our church. Zion isn't being slowed down by the lack of means. Zion isn't occurring. It's because of sin. It is because of sin. And um, we need to, to kind of be aware of that. Uh, it talks in here on, on some of the sin is get rid of those idle thoughts in your life. Well, I'm a little guilty of that. The work of the Lord is far more than making money. I'm a little guilty there. And uh, I was just talking to Howard and and uh, we've both been in the church, and we both worked in the church, but uh, we both worked all the days of our life to provide for our families. Yes, you need to do that. But uh, it's not about really about making money. It is about serving the Lord. <clears throat> I had a little incident when I was about the size of the smallest little girl there. Mother made some chocolate chip cookies. Have you ever tasted chocolate chip cookies that have just come out of the oven? Possibly one of the biggest temptations of my life. <laughs> and mother says, Ron, I don't want you eating any of those cookies. And you know, I'm nodding my head, I guess. And she left the room. And I'm looking at them, and, and I could, can just chocolate chip have, have a little smell to them or something? Oh, 
I thought. And um, I reached out and, and patted one, and uh, it was a little warm. But then I went ahead and picked it up, and I ate it. Now my sin becomes worse. Mother comes in, looks at the pan, and there's a space where one is missing. No one else is in the house. This is how it'll be when you stand before the Lord. You know, you're, you did wrong. Oh, he'll love you, but you're still nailed. I mean, you know what I mean? And, and um, <clears throat> she says, did you eat one of those cookies? And like I said, my sin got worse. And I said, no. She picks a mirror up off the couch or off the cupboard there, and she holds it up to my face. Well, there's some chocolate chip, you know, on my face there. I was little then, but uh, yeah, as, as elementary as it sounds, tell the truth. Don't be telling lies or anything close to being a lie or exaggerations. Tell it how it is. Jesus wants you to do that. He wants you to be a part of his kingdom. He wants you to be obedient. Obedient. He wants you to be disciplined. And um, uh, that that is very important. Listen to this here. Okay, this is in... Um, Study my notes here, section 83. If you are got your Doctrine and Covenants, section 83. Oh, there's... You know, when I was studying at length about Zion, I don't know how many times it's mentioned. 50 times? 70 times? It is, it is just endless. And um, anyway, in section 83, verse 7... And now I give unto you a commandment to beware concerning yourself. Yeah, think about yourself and what the things you do and think. To give diligent heed to the worth of eternal life. For you shall live by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. For the word of the Lord is truth. <clears throat> like I said, I've been around a while. And there are those who will, um, well... And I'm talking about even some of the, I guess, leadership in our church. They trifle with the truth. They, they try to confuse it in stuff like this. You pray as you pray. You praise. And it says right there that the Holy Spirit will be with you. And he will bring you wisdom and knowledge of the truth. It says it all the time. And look here. And the, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. For the Lord... For the word of the Lord is truth, and whatsoever is truth is light, and whatsoever is light is spirit, and the spirit of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Here's the one I want you to really listen to. And your minds in times past have been darkened because of unbelief, and because you have treated lightly the things that you have received, which vanity and unbelief has brought the whole church under condemnation. And this condemnation rests upon the children of Zion, even all, and they shall remain under this condemnation until they repent and remember the new covenant. And remember the new covenant, even the Book of Mormon. It bothers me when I talk and I have some association with, with leading people and, um, and their, uh, their amazement I'm amazed at their disbelief in the Book of Mormon. Let me tell you, that is the new, uh, the new covenant. And if you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, you will need to love God and love people, and you will need to know and understand and believe in the new covenant, the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is easy to read. The Book of Mormon is easy to understand. And it requires a great great belief on your part. Zion, we come down in 1959 and we're looking around. We're out here on a church farm out here uh, north of Green Valley. 
And um, now I look around, and I farmed even at Atherton, 6,000 acres at Atherton. You know how when those saints bought those? You know when they started building the auditorium, the sanitarium, the home for retired people? Do you know when all that was occurring? Oh, it was occurring in the 30s when people didn't have any money. But they believed. They believed in the Lord and they believed in Zion and they believed in the center place. And uh, his word was, was, was gospel to them. And lo and behold, I think it was in the early 50s, the auditorium was finally paid off. World War II had occurred. There was lots of reasons not to pay these things off, but they did because they had the Spirit of God with them and they recognized the importance of the preparation or the cause of Zion to prepare and to make us ready for the cause of Zion. Oh, the sanitarium's gone, the old folks' home's gone, the 6,000 acres at Atherton's gone, the 2,000 acres at the Little Blue is gone. And when the Atherton land came up, I fought for us to keep the land. When you do the work of the Lord in the 30s, there was hardly any money, and yet we were so blessed. How could we pay for, for that auditorium or pay a big part of it and then? And, and, and buy that land and do all of that in the 30s when people were working for, what, a dollar an hour, if that? And, um, and how could they pay for all that? And then today, with all our riches, we've got to sell it to pay our bills. That's called following the Lord. That's call, called uh, being in touch with the Lord and uh, loving him and him loving us and following in his ways, and he'll bless you like you've never been blessed before. But brothers and sisters, I don't want to dwell. I don't want to dwell on things of the past. I want to dwell on the things of the future. You cultivate a relationship with your Heavenly Father. You cultivate a relationship where you read and pray daily unto Him. Prepare ye, prepare ye for uh, the harvest is ready to harvest. And uh, we need people that will reap with their sickle and reap with all their might to bring about the preciousness of Almighty God. In Acts 2, 17, it says, I'll pour my spirit in the last days upon all flesh. Acts 2, 17. This kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I don't know how many of you are familiar with our church. I love the church, uh, and uh, I love the leadership, too, of our, of our church. But our church became divided. Now, if the Lord is anxious to bless us, if we call upon the Lord and his spirit will attend us and he'll lead us into the right way of things, then what's the problem? Let me tell you something. There's three things that can kind of deter us from uh, being with the Lord. <clears throat> One is, is, um, is uh, seeking for money. And people that become rich, and there's nothing wrong with becoming rich. Abraham had a, a cattle on a thousand hills. There's nothing wrong with becoming rich. But it's, sometimes it's what's do you. Really don't work for, for money so much. Work for the kingdom of God. That's one problem, is, is money. A second problem is sometimes people that have tremendous physical attributes they can play sports, they can be movie stars, they can do this and they can do that. They're so self-confident, they're so uh, independent that they don't need the Lord. You need the Lord. You need the Lord a whole lot. And you need to be dependent upon him. But here's a third thing that bothers me more than probably any of it. 
is the third thing that hurts us in becoming holy and spiritual and righteous is um, there's men and women that are very, very intelligent. And, and even in, in our church, oh, in other churches, that they become so, um, so thinking that they can determine the will of God. They can determine the will of God, and they don't really reach out. You see, if we would have been in tune with the Lord and really reached out with him, this division didn't need to occur. But there was those that took it upon themselves to determine how things should go. A few years ago, uh, I believe it was in the 1980s, do you remember when they used to have the summer series on the campus and things in Independence? Remember that? Well, I thought, I'll take it upon myself. My dad was preaching at one place. Um, and uh, maybe I got the dates wrong on that. Maybe it was the 90s. I don't know. But dad was preaching at one place, and one of our uh, presidency was preaching at another. And I said, it says in my patriarchal blessing that I have the discernment of spirit. And I thought, well, I'm going to go listen to both. And uh, I, I wasn't old, and I was young. I could move pretty fast, you know. But, um, uh, <clears throat> well, I looked there where the, uh, where the presidency was preaching, and probably there was, um, oh, 200. So I walked across the campus a little bit to where old Pop was preaching, fourth grade education, you know. And um, probably 2,000. You see, it's all about the Holy Spirit. Cultivate that Holy Spirit in your life. And he will tell you the things as you seek him and pray to him for the things that you ought to do. Maybe just in closing, uh, let's see, ninth chapter of Genesis the everlasting covenant. And this is my everlasting covenant, that when thy posterity shall embrace the truth, the new covenant, the Book of Mormon, is part of the truth. That when thy posterity shall embrace the truth and look upward, look upward, pray to the Lord with expectations, seek him out, and look upward, then shall Zion look downward, and all the heavens shall shake with gladness, and the earth shall tremble with joy, and the general assembly of the firstborn, that's Enoch, shall come down out of heaven and possess the earth, and shall have a place until the end comes. And this is my everlasting covenant, which I made with thy father Enoch. Oh, we're going to sing again? Oh, my. Mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.
that that was perfect. I give unto you to be the salt of the earth. I give unto you to be a light unto this people. Let your light so shine before this people. As I uh, was pondering that scripture this morning, I did a little bit of um, did a little bit of looking and reading. Um, I felt like I didn't understand it very well, and um, so um, that was in reference to um, the sacrifices that the Jewish people used to make. Um, unto the Lord, and we know that um, the sacrifices, the ordinances that were put in place um, before Christ came were in similitude of him, and there was a meat offering that was given, but um, if you burn meat just by itself, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't smell very good, and so um, the priests were instructed to salt the meat so that when it was burned, it had a sweet savor unto the Lord. And, um, and so that's what the gospel is to us, is um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It introduces the sweetness of him into our lives. And we know that what our God wants is he wants our hearts he doesn't need a body. He needs our heart. He needs a willing, a willing participant, a servant. And so, uh, as our brother Ron has shared, we have that opportunity to um, to commend Jesus Christ unto others, so that that sweetness becomes a part of their life, and um, let us. Let it shine. Let, uh, let us stand for him in all that we do. We never know um, what that light shining in our lives will, how that will serve others. And so we'll close our service this morning uh, with hymn 283, The Spirit of God Like a Fire is Burning.
our Heavenly Father. We are thankful for the gift of life and for this time and history and uh, the fulfillment of Scripture in which you, we find ourselves. And we're thankful for being reminded this morning of the call to Zion and of the call to your kingdom and of that which uh, is required of us that all might uh, come to pass, not only in uh, your direction, but in our life, that we might be a part of that great work. And so, Father, I would bless, uh, ask that you would bless these, your children, with uh, a blessing of strength, both physically and spiritually, that uh, those things in their life might not be a uh, distractor to the point of uh, our faith faltering and our belief uh, faltering in Thee, but rather that through Your strength and through that which You would work in our life, that we might indeed bear witness of those things that we know to be true, and that uh, the love of Your Son might shine forth through us as a light upon a hill and that others would see. And may we carry the Spirit of your Son with us to the degree that people would begin to respond more fully to the testimony of your Son. And so, Father, as we go from this house of worship, bless our, our travels, bless uh, our day, bless that which we would do, that we might do all in the honor of your Son, and for your honor and for your glory. And these things we pray in your Son's name. Amen. <clears throat> 